Well, I got my starter back. Well, that's not bad. Hello, everybody. Our Murray Riding Lawn Mower has developed a condition commonly known as no crank, no start. Meaning, when I turn the key, it no cranks and it no starts. So let's do a little bit of diagnostics, find out what's going on, and get it fixed. The first thing we're going to do is check the voltage on our battery. We can't do any other diagnostics until we have 12 volts at our posts. So let's get our multimeter turned on to DC voltage and see what we got. All right, we got 12 volts at our battery. The next thing we're going to do is open this access door to get to our star solenoid and make sure we have full voltage going from the battery all the way up to our solenoid. Behind our access panel, we have our starter solenoid right here, and we have an inline fuse. So let's pop out the fuse, check continuity on that, that'll be the easiest, and then we'll check for 12 volts on the left post of our starter solenoid. There's our fuse, still looking good. So we'll just pop that back in there. There we go. All right, we got 12 volts of the solenoid. So we confirmed our battery has voltage, the voltage is getting to our starter solenoid, and we have a good inline fuse for our ignition switch. One more quick and easy thing to check is whether or not our starter motor has failed. So we got the leads for our multimeter, the negative side hooked up to the negative on the battery, and we're gonna take our positive lead and hook it up right there on the terminal of our starter. With the clutch depressed, I'm gonna to try to turn the key. And we're not getting any voltage to the starter with the key turning. So let's check that signal wire to the starter solenoid. This orange wire right here is our signal wire to the starter solenoid. When we turn the key on the ignition, it sends 12 volts through here and clicks over the solenoid to make contact between these two posts and send voltage out to our starter motor. So let's pull this off, turn the key, and see if we're getting 12 volts. All right, got my clutch depressed. I'm leaning on the seat switch, checking voltage on my signal wire, and I'm gonna turn the key. No voltage, interesting. So something is going on between the battery and our ignition key or between our ignition key and the solenoid. Either way, our ignition key is not sending the 12 volt signal to the solenoid to kick it over and send voltage to the starter. So let's confirm that, make sure we have a good solenoid. I'm gonna run a jumper from the positive on the battery to our signal wire on the solenoid. And if the solenoid's good, it should kick it over and start trying to start the engine. I'm gonna clip one end on my battery here. Gonna to touch the other end to the pin on the solenoid. All right, so apparently we have a good solenoid. Now we need to figure out what is not letting us send voltage to that signal post. So the two main components that could be holding us up right now are the seat switch and the clutch switch, very similar to this. Without both of those being depressed and closing contacts, we will not be able to send voltage to our signal post on the starter solenoid. All right, let's check continuity on this. So this is a normally closed switch, meaning it has continuity when the switch is in resting position, and when you sit on the seat, it engages the switch and breaks the continuity. So this seems to be working fine. I'm gonna put it back together. Let's check the clutch switch next. This is our clutch switch right here. This is where we make contact, and this is our connector. 
So let's get it unplugged and we'll test continuity just like we did on the seat switch. I'm gonna check these two pins together and check those two pins together. That side is normally open and it's working fine. And that side is normally closed and it's also working fine. So both of our switches seem to be working. I'm gonna put this back together and we'll go to the next step. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be honest with you. I made kind of a goofy goober rookie mistake on this one. I checked the seat switch, I checked the clutch switch, I did not check the blade and gauge switch, which is right here. The switch is right on the inside of this box. And those three switches all together have to be closed for the engine to start. So as I was tracing the wires from the battery through the switches all the way up here, I couldn't get continuity from the wire coming out of my clutch switch to my signal post on my starter solenoid. And after physically tracing the wire back, I saw it ran right to a hidden, dirty, oily, crusty, muddy switch for our blade engagement. As soon as I saw that, I realized what I did. And now I think we're ready to just put it back together. Well, I got my starter back. That's pretty exciting, right? If you really boil it down, it all came down to that. That's what the issue was right there. No crank, no start. If I would have just flipped it back, it'll fire right up. So I guess make sure you cover all three switches before you go saying that you got a bad starter solenoid. After checking everything out, I realized my starter solenoid had failed. <laughs> Either way, I hope this video helped you out with a little bit of diagnostics. And maybe it'll help you solve your problem if your problem's not just being a goofy goober. I'll see you on the next video. Well, that's not bad.